So and can, can and some people, some people will say leaders like you, people who have always been in the limelight, who are activists, have grown comfortable in the wealth that you've acquired, and so you have never really pushed as hard as you should to cause changes if you won't at least stand behind one person and say, vote for this person. There's nothing wrong in being a rich man. <laughs> nothing, there's nothing wrong, but I don't know, no. I've done all that I can, right from, this is now 35 years of different kinds of struggles. Whereas, as you say, with my, with my money, I can just be in London, enjoy myself. But that doesn't make me happy. So I contribute my, my, my piece as leader of civil society, um, together with Femi Falana, Ayo Bay, all the others, to say, no, we have a role to play. So the role we have identified now is social media is going to deliver a shocking result in 2019. So that's the, the, the power is in the hands of your smartphone. Smartphone. So keep your ears open and everything. Absolutely. So you talk about, you know, some of your, some people have been blamed for voting APC and voting our current president. Some people in your, I mean, even associating with them. Do you have a situation where people are regretting what they've done and say, oh, I'm sorry, I wish I hadn't gone that way? Like Literally, your wife, for example. She's regretting. She said, I didn't know. I said, but I told you. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, had a, I had a history. So I said, I don't blame you because you really didn't, you know, you were not on the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the field. Mm -hmm. So you didn't feel the impact of what was done. But for those of us who felt the impact. People we, can we, change. Hmm? People can change. No. No, no, no. Some people just have been weak. They don't want to openly come out and say, we have had a bad deal. You know, the big men in the society, they're still pretending like it's all OK. Because they're benefiting now. How would they say, say anything against the... Nobody see what's up? <laughs> Nobody says anything bad against the sitting government. It's when he, all right, you will see. Assuming President Buhari were to lose, Oh, all the, new, all the media, you guys, then all the venom will come. And I'll say, well, look at them, hypocrites. Where were they? Say it today. Channels, this day, all of you, say it today. Say, this man, you have failed. They, what they will do, they will talk from both sides. They, the voters are confused. So that leaves us to push aside. In fact, Shawere says, and I agree with him, two years, this type of media thing is dead. The smartphone, why would I have to come to the studio? I just look watching my news on the smartphone. Therefore, there'll be freedom. And we're already tapping the freedom of the free press on the smartphone. What about this whole talk of hate speech? The smartphone and the free press you talk about is yes. so unregulated and there's danger in that. You, even you will admit that. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So what parliament needs to do is to pass relevant laws. But the problem with parliament, rather than pass relevant laws focused on controlling hate speech, they will focus on controlling my mouth. <laughs> that's the problem. So that's what they are doing now. They're focusing on controlling civil society by trying to regulate us. So one does not have any problem conceptually against laws that regulate and control hate speech. But is that really the purpose? But I would say even the civil society has failed us, wouldn't you say? Well, have we failed. failed us. Well, are, we, are, we, well, are we the society? We're only as strong as society makes us. Society case. listens to you. Society listens to us, but we only as strong. If I say, all right, you know what? Let's have a 10 million man match in Tinubu Square. How many people come out? They will be praising you. Say, ah, well done. I saw your article. I saw you on TV. But all right, let's go. They won't come. But in America, somebody will bring an issue to the fore, and then you'll find one million people in, in, in Washington Memorial. So that's also part of the problem. So civil society, I can't drag you to anywhere. I can, only, I can only advocate to you, appeal to you, but maybe you're weighed down by no light. You haven't paid your children's school fees. You have a medical issue. So I beg, okay, I'm coming. I won't be there. We are the most difficult, uh, this is Nigeria, is the one of the most difficult places to be a civil society advocate. It's a very tough job. Very tough. I remember when Abacha told Marwa, on the 28th of March, 1998. What are those boys making noise in Lagos? You are lying on to talk. Please go to Lagos and shut the whole place down. Oh. Meanwhile, I have two million uh, Nigerians screaming for me. Lyo, nobody was screaming for him. That's Dan Kanu, who used to endlessly ask for Abacha. We didn't say, okay, five million man march in Lagos. We we're only about 50, 000, 50 that came out. But at least we succeeded in Cracking the... Which is the point I'm making. Yes. Even if we don't go with you, you can still do what you got to do. Yes, but there are many. What about uh, Momo don't do? 
what about uh, what about uh, BBOG? I mean, you know, in fairness, in fairness, there's a whole there's a whole raft of 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 civil society advocates now on diverse things, so on diverse things, driving issues. Well, you have to give that to us. I hope you're not thinking that we will be like we were when we were fighting the military. No, no, the tools were different. The tools were different. That requires road march, hard knocking, and all that. So what does this require? Brain, brain power. So how effective is that being? It's going to be slow, I suppose. It's not going to be as effective as force or, you know, coming out actively to... Mm, no, do you know, I hope you know that, I return again to the smartphone, I hope you know that the social media played a strong role in bringing boy to power. Yeah. This time it's going to be the reverse. It's going to be the reverse because we're using the very tools that brought in to say vote both APC and PDP out. So for me, the structure of what will happen is on ground. What is missing is they will then ask you, okay, vote for who? That's the task. So that... what would you say to Nigerians who are watching today who are going to vote? Because it's not really for me, it's beyond which party. What should we be thinking about as we are seeking to cause whatever kind of change you require? Think about yourself. Are you happy? Do you have children? Are they, are they employed or unemployed? What are your prospects? Where do you see yourself being in five, ten years? If you are a trader or a lawyer or a hairdresser, do you have power? Or do you spend all your money on petrol or diesel on generator? Don't you want to be free from all this? It's been like that for years. If people say, for example, a party comes into power, four years is not enough. You need extra time to finish. This is just the beginning. Finish what? Finish what? To make a change. Look, without boasting, if I, Ulisa Bakaba, the Nigerian president, you will see change in one year. The first thing you do is to create peace and tranquility. And without peace, nothing can work. Once you've done that, the second thing is to give hope. The third thing is to bring everybody to the table so that they can play their role. Right now, the federal government is, is controlling every aspect of our Nigerian lives. So if I have to sum up, what you're saying is that Nigerians need to be wiser and they be more careful about choosing, look at their situation and determine who's best. It's not a question of giving one person 10 years, 20 years, 10 no, no, years. No, no, no. Thank you very much for thank being you on the show. Much. I appreciate thank you. you. Yeah. And thank you for watching. We must round up now. This is Seriously Speaking. We'll see you again next week.